And here we are. Senior Buzzford, how are you doing, my friend? How are we getting on? How's prep going for the debut? What's going on? Yeah, it's going good, mate. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm training hard for the fight, to be honest. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. 30 days to go now. Like, training's going really, really well. Like, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling loose, making improvements every day. I'm just so, looking forward to getting in and showing myself, to be honest. So, regards to the card itself, so let me just pull this up. So, is that like local show to yourself? What's the one here? Um, so, where is it? I don't no, know. it's in Blackburn. That's it's about a four-hour drive from mine. I'm based in Newcastle, so traveling. So I'm about to come back with that win. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is kind of it. I mean, that kind of um distance anyway. So, regards to the opponent you've got there, do you know much about him so far? Any kind of idea how long he's been training for? Any prior background? Um, I know he's got a black, a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. Sorry, not a black belt. Um, I was going to say, it's a bit of a debut against Stitch stuff, I think. Yeah, I know, that's, that's a bit of a sandbag, isn't it? Amateur debut, black belt. But, um, yeah, I know, he's got a bl- I know he's got a blue belt in jiu-jitsu, so I'm expecting him to have really strong grappling. I think he's going to come out in pressure early. So we've been working on a lot of counter-pressure tactics, just working on a load of stuff to possibly shut that out, like to take down defence, like eliminate his strength as much as we can. I mean, the funny thing is, when you are getting started, the blue belt sounds like such a, a staple thing. The, the, uh, the thing with this reference point I've always got is, Wonder Boy's a purple belt, and that sounds like not that great in the UFC. But the blue belt at Ami level, think, fucking hell, he must be Royce Gracie, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it's that kind of like transition sort of thing. So with that, we know he trains from MMA as well as separate disciplines of jiu-jitsu. Do you yourself train in separate disciplines? Are you primarily just MMA? Um, mostly just MMA. I do come from a bit of a jiu-jitsu background, just a white belt, though. I'm most, like, I, I would make the excuse mostly no gay, but like, it is what it is. Like, I, I just enjoy training, focusing on my MMA. Jiu-jitsu is just a bit of a side for us. Well, this is a, a very important point. I'm glad you said it that way as well, because I am a very much a jiu-jitsu boy. I love jiu-jitsu, but I know MMA is very different. You've got to treat it very different. Otherwise, you get people playing guard, you get people doing all sorts of bad MMA habits. And they get, I don't know, get a bit comfy. So now it's good that you've got that kind of, I don't know, preference point. But regards to the yeah, Cam versus normal train, yeah, purple, yeah, yeah, uh, Semba, I think. So it's one of those. But again, there's a John Danaher thing. He said on the podcast with Lex Friedman, I think, which was, "Don't aim to be a black belt. Don't set your standards that low. Aim to be good because there's enough shit black belts." I think fucking, oh, it's true. Like, yeah, there's quite a few you can catch when they're sleeping a little bit. You, you, there's a few. You don't want to be that guy, you know what I mean? Regards no, of your preparation for this fight, opposed to normal training, what's been the biggest change? Like, what's been that switch point from being training as normal to fight camp? I think the intensity, to be honest, like, there's been a lot of physical tests, a lot of mental tests, just put in front of us. Like, it's it's the first fight, so it's really setting the bar for like, let's see how much we can take moving forwards, and. So far, I'm taking it well, to be honest, because, like I said, there's a few mental tests and stuff I haven't been through before mm. with intensity. But flying colours, I'm enjoying the training, to be honest. I, I prefer the higher level of intensity going forwards. Yeah, I definitely make leaps and bounds, but this is the nature of what fight camp is outside of the actual training side. It's the mental side. So how are you outside of training in regards of the mental prep for it? Are you pretty much forget it what's not going on until you're back in training is it non-stop switched on is it stress is it fun how are you feeling so i feel like i switch off i'm like two different people in the gym i'm like i'm fully focused on my fight i'm ready i'm ready to go gloves are on hands are wrapped let's get the session done out the way and then as soon as i leave the gym that just snaps i'm focused on the fight i'm ready to like go home watch some tape watch some old fights i love doing stuff like that but i feel like when i'm not in the gym i'm not needing to use that adrenaline so i'm saving that adrenaline for the gym ready to work hard just I, I don't know if that makes sense to be honest but like yeah i feel like when i've got that adrenaline i use it a lot better in the gym than i would outside of the gym oh definitely because again the nature of always wanting to do more always wanting to be you know it's always switched on it gets very exhausting but saving it for when you can practice it and apply it no definitely useful regards of the structure of your training so far without going into too much detail how many sessions you're aiming for a week is it a couple a day is it just a couple times a week what have you managed to get in i'm looking to get something at least once a day six days a week we rest on sundays 
get that big recovery in between. So Saturday will be a very technical session, so we can use that and recover in time for Monday's hard rounds. Tuesday through Thursday is another technical session. We've mixed in with some strength and conditioning in between if I can get the time. Friday, I'll do more hard rounds and then Saturday's technical slash tape study. All planned out. Now, regards of your gym are you with? Now, which gym are you with? Sorry. Hey, I'm representing the hit squad from South Shields. So it's primarily striking based, to be honest. It's mm. like I'm looking to become as well-rounded as I can. Like I said, coming from a bit of a grappling background. Call it a grappling background, come back to that white belt thing, but that's it's no gay guys. So <laughs> <laughs> no belts anyway. But now I no say that the reason I sort of say that is whether or not it was going to be doing your nogi somewhere else, you're striking somewhere else, and then all this, that, and the other approach doing MMA in an MMA gym. But now it's good that you've got that kind of, one, the awareness and two, the actual structure, because otherwise people just want to do more and more and more and more, and you just burn out. And who's that for? Then you're just overworked, overstressed without any kind of structure. Now, regards of planning this camp per se, planning your training, planning all this stuff, have you had someone for a reference point? Has it been coaches? Has it been yourself? How have you found, I don't know, how to structure this camp? I think it's just more like ironing out as much as we can, to be honest. So there's been areas all over. I'm not going to go into too much detail on anything, like obviously, but I think it's just been a case of looking at where needs a lot of work and where can we get like better as we do, because we don't know a lot about the opponent outside of the fact he's a blue belt, the fact he trains out of a good team, Manchester Predators. And... Yeah, so it's just becoming as well-rounded as possible so we can be ready for anything he brings. Oh, 100%. And regards of your competition experience, have you done any competitions in Nogi, any other disciplines at all? Um, I've done the odd grappling competition here and there. I did the ADCC British Championships in 2019. That was the last one, obviously, before the pandemic mm. hit. Didn't get much in last year. And then gyms reopened. I just used the time to fully focus on getting the MMA debut sorted. Now, what was your reference point for having this debut? What did you, do your gym have certain standards? Is it a certain amount of interclubs? Is it just when you know you know? Did you approach your coach about it? Did they approach you? What was your starting point? Uh, I approached my coach about it, to be honest. I was like, look, I, I want to do well in this sport. I want to go far. I'm I'm 18 in July. Like, I need I need this chance to like get started as early as I possibly can. Like the earlier the better, so I can be active. I can get those fights and get that experience. And we're massively using this as a reference point to be like, right, okay, let's let's get you in. You ready for it? Let's have a go. I mean, this is a huge thing now. Like the idea that it's a fine line. This so getting in as early as possible versus using it for experience are two different things. When you're ready, you're ready. But when do you know you're ready? You don't really know. You kind of just figure it out. If you're against someone you're better than you always look ready. If you're against someone on a higher stand, you'll never look ready. So it's always been yeah. a tricky one. And the fact you've got, you've got a mix there. But the tricky thing is not to rush yourself, not to rush your progression. First to say, a good thing your coach is giving you the nod, making sure you're all right. And again, it's amateur. This is the beauty of this. As much as you're taking it seriously, it's fun. And also it's a reference point. It's win, lose, draw, whatever. You get that cage time, that time under pressure to sort of learn, adapt, everything else like, I don't know, I've had three or four amateur fights and every one I've been different person each stage. And that's kind of an important point. And that's something you'll find as well as you start having these fights. You start to realise, okay, I thought I was doing everything I could have done for this camp. I thought I was the man in this area, but actually there was this big gap here. I was doing really well here or so on and so forth. Be able to revise it, change things, tweak things, but enjoy it ultimately. Because again, you'll never, there's never a point when the work's done, but there's always a point where you could say, okay, I can test it now, see what happens, see how far we can go. And it's definitely an interesting one. Regardless That's a big of- thing, isn't it? Like if, it, you, can be as, it, you can be one of the best guys in the gym, but then it's under the pressure. Like getting that cage time is really, really important. Getting the experience under the pressure, like going out there, seeing like you can do all you want in the gym, but if that doesn't work when you're out there, that's why you need to be ready. Like you need to be having fun with it as well, I think. Because it's like, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, like don't bother being there. If you feel like you're doing it just for the sake of it and not for yourself, for your own enjoyment, then like there's no real, there's no real joy in it really. 
Well, that's the huge thing. So ask so much of you, and this is the thing people don't appreciate and definitely won't appreciate is where it's all well and good seeing what you see on Instagram. Yes, the six packs and that are all well and good. Yes, life's fantastic. However, they don't see, okay, I'm in tears after my sparring session because I didn't perform up to standard. I look, I'm missing out on family meals because I'm sacrificing to make the weight and so on and so forth. But it's all self-inflicted. But again, these are real things. And this is the nature of it. Yes, it is fun when you're doing the things you enjoy, but you need that to outweigh the bad times where it's the sacrifice, the struggle and everything else. Because yes, it's the grind, but also if you love the hard work, you love the development and everything else, you appreciate it from a bigger picture point of view. Now, regards of the gym you're at now, the bodies on the mat, is it a lot of the same people? Is it quite a small facility? Is it quite a big facility? I'm not too familiar. It's quite a small facility, to be honest. We're based a lot around, like, it's a very private team. There's only a few of us, like, six or seven. So it's very much the same people a lot of the time. So how that works is, like, we basically just push each other up. Like, it's a lot of repeated rounds with the same bodies. So we're very, very used to each other, which I think, as much as it's good to get different bodies in spar, and I think it's good when you've got the same people as well, because when you're leveling up, you know, like, they know everything I can do. I know everything they can do. Like, those are some of the toughest rounds I'll ever have because we know each other inside out. Like, we're there every day. We see each other all the time. Like, we see how we're improving. We know each other's weak points, strong points. We know what to do, what will work, what won't. And, like, it, like I would hate to see those rounds. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really fun, to be honest. Like, we'll... Like we'll have the rounds, we'll sit afterwards and be like, oh shit, like that's that's improved so much. Like I wasn't expecting that. And then like there's just so much respect there. I think it's it's nice having that small team vibe. A person for reference point is Ashley Williams. So he's a Welsh Jiu Jitsu competitor and he's got to the world level from training at his sort of local club with the same people he's been with. Because people will say again, the training with repeated partners. partners you sort of can tell how the round's going to go anyway, but then it's getting more out of that training and get more out of specifics. And again, it's an interesting sort of thing is you'll polish off your game to such a fine degree because again, they'll know your feints, they'll know your traits. You've got to do that bit extra to apply what you're going to do anyway. So when you fight um, your opponent, I think 30th of July, 31st, 31st, he won't, yeah, he won't have that awareness of one, the layers of game you've got to get to what you want to apply. And this is where you can start to be, I don't know, start to express your style a lot more to different degrees and build systems. Like you see a lot with the jiu-jitsu guys that bring out these DVDs, building systems around certain, either an area of a game or technique itself. And it's a very interesting premise. And this is what you'll find as well, training with the same people time and time again, is, is you go, I go, action, reaction sort of thing. And you'll start building these layers and this big sort of, almost like a tree of techniques, you see what I mean? It's very interesting, very exciting sort of premise as well. Yeah, it's like you get use that chance to build the system, like find out your style, like realize what works and what doesn't, and then like you can take what works into that competitive setting. Oh, 100 percent And again, it's also taking the feedback from what doesn't work. Like exactly, this is yeah. something game changing, is to ask your sparring partners, what did you think I did wrong there? What what gaps did you see? Asking your coaches, what could I do better? What could I do differently? Because a very sort of Everyone wants to, everyone thinks they know what they did wrong or right. <laughs> but until you actually ask it, you feel, get a bit of a, I don't know, it's a bit personal, but it's helpful. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit close to home, but there we are. Outside of training, what is your, how do you switch off? What is your sort of, what's a hobby outside of MMA you've got? Outside of MMA, I just love, just, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like I, outside of MMA, outside of work, I just sit home and I just like, find a series on Netflix I just put it on and, I, and I'll binge the daylights out of it like, what are you watching at the minute? Bojack Horseman for like a fourth time through like Netflix is dead at the moment so random that's so good I know it's, it's so random but like I've, got, like I've got Loki going on as well like I've got a couple of series at the same time I'm a bit of a nerd like that but no, you got to enjoy you got to enjoy you know what I mean like the Rick and Morty's and all the rest of it I'll tell you what oh, yeah, um, that's a good show. you playing um, Warzone as well no, nah, I'm not playing Warzone at the moment. No, no. It's not good for the patient to tell you that much. I'll, yeah, I'll no. show him blag it and say it's like, you know, cognitive work. You know, you get all the high level strength coach do all the sort of like yeah. reception work. I think that's what Warzone is for me. That's how I blag it. I think it's like training still, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, like stress there. This is it. It's all reactions. It's all um, actions and you know, decisions under pressure. You can, you can blag it. You could be all right. 
<laughs> we'll work it out. But yeah, so just a quick one. We'll sort of jump around to things. So sponsors. For someone who hasn't had a debut yet, you've managed to accrue quite a few sponsors, including our man Eric's gear. So yeah. the, the companies you're working with now, one, how does it come about? Are they friends? Are they businesses you've just sort of reached out to? How's this all come about? So like in honestly, I'm a bit I'm really amazed by the support so far, to be honest. Like you said, I haven't had my debut or anything, and all that's came through. Like two sponsors right off the bat. So Maximum Fitness and Maximum Recovery. That's came about through work. I actually work there. So like, they've like, agreed to support. So having two off the bat kind of looks good straight away. Mm. Ministry of Vision, that came about. That was That's a friend. And, like, he was willing to support me for my fight. And that's something I really appreciate. He was the first one on board. And then Eric's gear came about. I was speaking, I was speaking to Rich. We were, like, we'd got on really well. Found out we're really like-minded. And told him my fight like he said he was going to support and a lot of it has just been people reaching out me reaching out they're both like just mutually benefiting from what's coming up to be honest i'm i'm really blown away by the support I can't wait to go out there and make them proud to show why they've why they should have put their support in me from the start and this is a I phrase it properly the tricky thing is they want to support you for you so Try not to put the weight of the world on your shoulders to perform this sort of Anderson Silver esque performance. Again, mm. they appreciate who you are and what you're putting in with this. And they want to support a career. This fight, the next fight, however many fighters you end up having, that's what they're supporting. It's not the one and only performance. It's just try and make sure you still enjoy what you're doing. And I say it very literally the fact that this is. It's a, it's a hard thing to appreciate when you're in these sort of camps, you're in these moments of competition, you've got people supporting you, people backing you up and all this. It then puts like a bit of a, not a weight, but a kind of expectation from yourself to, okay, I need to make sure I deliver for this, make sure I earn this. But you've earned that already. You've earned this from being yourself, putting the hours in again, you're making these relationships and just enjoy what you're doing still. Because try not to let anything else sort of confuse things. It's so tempting. Again, I'm on the reason I say this stuff because I've been that guy that I get a couple of sponsors think they're expecting some sort of like ADCC level performance. They're not. They want to support me just doing all right. So it's... no, it's like don't get me wrong. It's like it's it's my amateur debut. I know they're not expecting me to go out and look like world level, world champion level. But I think it would just be nice to. It would, it would definitely be nice to go out, bring a result back, and show them where it's like supported me as a person. Thank you so much. Like. A, a win always looks better than a loss at the end of the day oh that, don't get me twisted you're going to get the like, right. wanna... no, no choice about it but it's more just a case to remember that you're there for fun you're there to develop and there to express yourself and the wins are bonus yeah. on top of that but you're still getting the win yeah. let's, let's not forget I'm, that I'm, bit. There for, I'm there for fun I'm there to like, show myself off see what works see what doesn't but like I'm really going for that win to be honest like a lot of people have like commented on my post a lot of people have messaged me saying a lot of stuff where it's like Oh, you should promote. You should say some nasty stuff. And I'm like, well, no, like, I, no, I'm no, not no, gonna. No. Fake, I'm not gonna fake that. Do you know what I mean? That's not me. Like, I didn't get the support I've got being like some fake like dick. Really, like, you can you can respect your opponent. You can go out there and not say a bad word about him, and you can still want to like beat the brakes off him. Like, he's gonna come out. He's gonna try and finish me. I'm gonna go out and try and finish him. Like, it is what it is. Like, there's there's not friends, but there's no need to like. There's no yeah, need make to it nasty. Yeah. that. Definitely. There's a lot of respect for that as well. And then the nature of preparation, people's comments, it definitely gets in the way. Um, a slightly different sort of subject with this. Regards to your weight division, so your lightweight now, what are you walking around at? Um, I'm walking around slightly under. I'm walking around 69.3. So like, I'd always try and give myself a bit of a kilo allowance. It sounds really crazy, to be honest. But like, I'm actually going up and wait for this. So like, naturally, like, grappling like other stuff i would compete at like 65 66 so i'm actually going up and wait for this because i had a bit of trouble getting matched for the card i was looking at featherweight initially i was gonna but, say yeah, 69 you might as well just take a big shit that's you saw it yeah that's it <laughs> none of it was no, nothing was really coming through like uh, a couple of things fell apart so something came up at lightweight i jumped at it but then spoke to my coach about it as well and he was like yeah like you can do it fair enough like let's go for it it's the first fight let's see where we're at let's have a bit of fun we'll focus our training 
That's a huge uh, thing anyway. I mean, the nature of these weight cuts, people seem to make a weight cut camp and it's not, it's not the point, especially for you, Dave, you don't need that. You don't need that stress. It's, it's given us more time to focus on my training, to be honest. It means I can also have a bit more leeway with my diet. <laughs> <laughs> what's the diet saying at the minute then? Is it pretty clean? Is it a bit mixed? What is it, what's the um, split normally? <laughs> It's pretty clean. I haven't had a takeaway in a while, but I do love, like, I've, I've got a real soft spot for Reese's Cups. I, I don't know what it is. I just kind of stay away. It, I've, I've got a shop around the corner from mine, to be honest. I think it's just, it, it just calls my name. I kind of, like, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm walking around slightly under. If it wasn't, like, I'm all right with that, though, because if I was walking over, I would have wanted to go to 69 anyway just to give myself that extra room so I can start refueling early rather than cut to 70. Like, I don't, I don't know, like look at something and put a bit of weight on miss and like, fuck. Whereas if I cut 69, start refueling, start getting some water in. I mean, you, you, you say cut if you're walking around that anyway. I mean, it depends on how you were to do it. How old are you now? Need to cut now? How old are you now? About 18, 18, 19? Yeah, 18 in a couple of weeks, yeah. I was going to say, because the nature of cutting weight at that kind of age is a pain in the ass. Because again, your metabolism is through the roof. So like putting on weight is hard enough. So it's losing weight. You just kind of sit where you're at. And the nature of these cuts, it can be such a spectrum. Like people like yourself who walk around on weight versus people like myself who have quite big cuts. Like I do about six or seven kilos in water to get to featherweight. But yes. again, it's just a bit, I don't know, it's case by case. Like ideally not going to be doing that much longer, but the premise being that different people perform to different standards. Again, you get people who stay at their fighting weight all the time because that's what they train at, what they compete at. So it makes sense to keep it the same. Yeah. Whereas some people like myself prefer that that gap because you get well weights, the same sort of build as me. You get further weights. Well, you don't get that weight, it's my build. <laughs> There's only one, a couple of others, but there we are. It's more that sort of premise that depends on what you want to prioritize with it. So regards of the next couple of weeks what do they look like for yourself is it three hard weeks and one off is it just four hard as nails what's your general sort of preference for this so we're taking it week by week to be honest so like as the hard rounds are coming in like we're we're doing a lot of that to see like really push that mental test where give it the whole like the hard rounds will test you a lot more than the fight will, and that's no disrespect to the opponent. It's just like the sparring partners know you, they know everything you're going to do. Mm. So they're going to push you to your absolute best. And so from the from the looks of it, this week is very technical focus. And then we'll go from there. So I'm, I am looking to get a couple of days recovery in before the fight, though, like with me having to travel down, like find a hotel, stay in Blackburn. No, oh, 100%, because so, otherwise you go to the last week, get there on the day. You don't need that. You don't need that at all. The last week will be very technical or easy, I'd imagine, compared to the last few weeks that we've been. Oh, perfect, mate. Best of luck to yourself. A couple of questions to leave us on. First one is, well, ideally this would be a retrospective thing, but maybe your first time around. So you're about to compete. You walk out to yourself. What advice do you give you to compete in the best headspace? best headspace just go in there with a clear mind whatever i'm feeling he's feeling it too it's normal he's just a man oh look at that that's, that's pretty fucking stoked for a man without that much experience love that love that well, you? That's, that's it it's like it's just it's just a guy isn't it do you know what i mean it's like i'm i'm human he's human like i want to go in there and get the win he wants to go in there and get the win like what we're, we're the same when we're, we're not too different just the only thing that is going to be different is who wins like just got to go out there and Make sure it's me. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that a lot. Uh, second thing, post win. What is the takeaway saying? Is it just Reese's cups or what are you saying? Oh uh, mate, I think I'm just gonna like absolutely blow out. I haven't touched the takeaway since the end of May. <laughs> like that is that is gonna be a good few days just eating a load of shit. <laughs> What's the takeaway? What are you saying? I don't know, probably a big Chinese to be honest. Yeah, get a couple of munchie boxes in. And just like absolutely go to town on it. Love it. Absolutely love it. And the last one is day one beginner walks in the gym full of beans. What advice do you give them to perform in the best set? Not what advice do you give them to get started on the right foot? So day one beginner walks in fully enthusiastic. What do you say to them to get them started on the right, right foot? Go as hard as you can with everyone all the time. Now I'm joking. I'm probably <laughs> really angry. Pure raging. 
that's it. Just Chava swing all the time. Like find the hardest man in the gym. Square overhand right him. Like ask him to spar in eight ounce gloves. You'll love that. <laughs> so your dominance. <laughs> that's it. Show it. Show your alpha. Try heel hook in a blue belt. Watch what happens. But um, nah. Um, have fun with it. To be honest, like if you're in the gym for the first time, like you come in there, you've made a good decision, you've took the action to go in, like turn, like find some discipline in your life to like do something like that. I love the discipline that comes from the sport. Like going in there, have fun. Like some of the best friends you'll make will be in the gym. Like be very, very open-minded. Everyone in there is there to help you get there. Fantastic, mate. Thank you for your time. So your sponsors to shout and yourself, so your social media we'll start with? Um, Cole underscore best word. It's got three Ds. I'm going to shout my sponsors, Maximum Fitness Newcastle, Maximum Recovery, Eric Skier, Undisputed Champion Nutrition, New Gen CBD, Ministry of Vision and Newcastle Behaviour Club. And thank you so much for the support, everyone. Really and can't wait for the time. Got Fight Watch UK, what's, what's this then? Is this something you're doing? Yeah, that's my doing. That's that's my page. Um, oh, started off last year in the lockdown with the whole... Thanks for the follow. Um, oh, yeah, started off last year in the lockdown. Like, I wanted to give amateur fighters a bit more recognition. Started doing a bit more of a podcast with that. I had Rich from Eric's Gear on the other day. That's out on Friday. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll swap sides at one point. I'll get you that on. Sounds good, man. <laughs> sounds good to me. Um, I'll get you on, talk about you. Yeah upcoming fight battle arena and stuff like, I love now nah, I love giving like amateur fighters that recognition it started off as that and then it turned out like full journalist on the sport like it went through a bit of a rough patch where like I got hacked last month but like I was kind of asking for it when the passwords fight watch one so I've changed the passwords set up two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, it's, pass- it's password but the S's are fives oh there we are yeah, cryptic. Are you in the matrix? That's it. Fantastic. Well, <laughs> so just to reiterate, so Cole Bestford, three Ds, or Cole underscore Bestford, on the page you've got all your sponsors. You got Five Watch UK, your brand, and um, yeah. what would you call it? journalism? Would you call it? Just... Call it journalism podcast. MMA news. Fight media. No, we all call it. That. Fight media. There we go. Fight media. Look there at that. Sure, it's sweet. Thank you very much, That's my friend. And also check out the podcast sponsors, English Hypnotist and Good Performance Nutrition. I'm working with Richard Discamp from the English Hypnotist. Again, he's someone who it's hard to express. We talk about the mental side of training a lot on this, and it's just been absolute worlds apart from anything else. I don't know how I went through a camp without it. Highly recommend Rich again, very sound person, been in a competitor himself, and he gets it. And good performance nutrition, Dan Good, former professional fighter in the fitness world. And again, he's a very people oriented person. The products he's got are very well priced, mix well, taste good. Again, I use them and I should say enough. Thank you very much, my friend. Be sure to check out fisticuffspodcast.com for all related kit. And also we've got the samples in for the new Fisty Tops. Love to see them. And new shorts arrived as well. So we'd love to see it. Thank you very much, my man. Thank you very much. And support Cole on his journey.